and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 121 of I Got Gameplay. Yes, it's me, it's me, it's Michael Burhad, and I don't know why I'm talking like this, but I'm here You today. did it yesterday, funnily enough, so... I, I did, <laughs> and I sounded sexy, so that's probably why I'm doing it again. And if you heard that voice, he is my co-host on Burhan and the Boy, the uber-sexy, uber-talented, and some say he looks like Keanu Reeves. He is Mr. Dave Wade. I do look like Keanu Reeves, you bitch. Let's just get that say. right. Some including me. I, I, I decided that I, I, I didn't. I didn't say it. Well, I didn't. You didn't hear this, Sander, but I mentioned it when I was talking to Bohan yesterday. Which is, you and me should go to Vegas, and we could call it um, Sabretooth and Keanu hit the strip. Or is it what do we Sabretooth yes. and Morpheus hit the strip? Oh, Sabretooth yeah. and Neo. Neo. You sort of shit out. I am the one, you prick. I've just killed the joke. That's just. I've been and I also <laughs> like to say really, really quickly because I've been having a massive binge on it. Um, my penis aches for Daphne from Fraser. My penis just aches. Anyway, speaking of penis aching, uh, we have the man <laughs> who sends many ovaries exploding and many penises are shaking. He is the one, the only Mr. Exis Gaming podcast himself, and he has an epic beard, of course, Mr. Xander Scullion. <laughs> Your segways, man. <laughs> I was like, speaking of speaking of hurting penises, here's Xander. <laughs> I, I know how to do it. What's no, up? No. It's segways are like when you're a kid and you had that little wooden toy where you had to put the correct shape thing in the wrong hole. And you just, just bang it in there, but bang it in there. If you hit it hard enough, it'll work. That's kind of what I tend to do when having sex. How did you know my game? <sighs> They've gone You're quiet. I've silenced. I've silenced <laughs> Longboy's post. Right. Speaking of silence, we have the, the amazing, the one and only. He helped save the show yesterday on Slamcast because he talked a lot. He is Mister Gaming Pegasus himself, Mister Nick Horacek. Emphasis on the whore. What's up? He's yeah, my yeah. favorite person. Passed I'm a man out. whore, right? You are. You're a man whore. <laughs> don't, don't lie, Nick. I've seen you in the women that you like have Facebook profile sessions with. You know, I'm just sitting there going, damn, homie. That's, 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 <laughs> oh my God, I think pretty sure you could be arrested for that. Excuse me, sir, but, you know, <laughs> did you have a Facebook profile session with this individual? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So that's basically slang for rape. Okay. Anyway, speaking of... You I'm not, not even going to go and try and segue from that. <laughs> speaking of someone who goes around touching himself, he is the amazing <laughs> Mr. Sean Michelin. <laughs> Oh, it's hard not to touch yourself when it gets in the fucking way all the time, man. You just see me trying to piss, man. It's like fighting the fucking 15 alarm bar hose just by myself. It's like basically trying to tame an elephant, really, isn't it? It's just going to eventually just spurt water on you. Anyway. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't go for a fucking I visit to Red Snake Charm because the damn thing would just start left. coming out of the pants. Speaking, also, we have a special guest on the show today. He is the power metal gamer himself. Um, I'm probably going to say his name wrong because I can't remember it. Is Tag O'Callaghan? <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Tag, man, Tig. the fucking tiger. <laughs> I sound like every time oh, I, I say that, tiger. I sound like Seamus. You know, Tig, Tig O'Callaghan. Maybe oh, I need to drink. Tiger, 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 potato. <laughs> potato. <laughs> Maybe I need to drink more. Potato, man. Oh, I've been the sky. Where the blazes hell have you been? Well. Uh. Oh, oh, I don't, don't even know what that was, Burhan, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure it wasn't Irish. Oh. It was go, a rapist. Go but... lawn boys post yourself. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of <laughs> that, I'm, 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 I'm without a post. Yes, he is. Uh, if you want to donate to Dave's post, you can send him money on Patreon. because Just three pounds sending... a week will buy Lawn Boy. Yeah, because everyone's post. sending fucking money to everyone today. We've got people whining and complaining about their YouTube money. People fucking... Off. Oh, no, we're not going to... Yeah, we're not going to jump on And some other Social people want you to pay for their spoiled. fucking holidays. So we'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, first, let's go into a little bit of gaming news. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, let's do it as we usually do it and get to it, of course, as they say in Xanadu. I love Xanadu. Xanadu! Xanadu! Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> now we are here. What did I, what did I do? 
<laughs> it's Xanadu. You should have a segment. Xander does. Du, 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 du. And Xanadu. <laughs> oh, Let's go on to game. You need a fucking blog title. Xanadu. Xanadu. <laughs> I'm going to actually like Photoshop his face. I've been Photoshopping his face on loads of people um, for some reason. Show me a bloody turtle <laughs> picture, Burham. I have. I know. I just, I'm just fascinated with Xander's face, so I keep Photoshopping him on both. It was really stuff. difficult to tie that on my face. Just saying. That's that, what that, to anyone else out there who doesn't know what I, what this was, that, yeah, that sounded really disgusting. Never mind. Shut up. Move on. Gaming news, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do gaming news. So, Mr. Xander Scullion, what's in the news this week? Uh, well, the only thing I can think of that's been in the news lately is uh, the Nintendo Direct was on April Fool's Day. Which everyone thought it, we we didn't think it was going to be a real Nintendo Direct, but it really was. And some of the stuff they talked about, it, which was really interesting, like uh, the new DLC coming out for Mario Kart Eight, that's coming out in April, and they're also going to be including 200 CC mode. So you're going to be too Ooh, fast, too yeah. furious oh, in uh, Mario Kart. What we need is a and, me, uh, a me version of Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also <laughs> yeah, they uh, so they we announced. That. Okay, Zana, continue. They also, yeah, they also announced something I was really excited for, that uh, Fatal Frame 5 is going to be localized oh, for yeah, the West uh, region. I like that. That's really cool. I think that's, yeah, I think that's great. Um, the fact that we're getting something... That's a smart move. What the Wii U's built for it. You've got a fucking tablet you can use as the camera. It's like freaking... I know. Putting, it's like that's, putting a penis in a hole. <laughs> You're not bashing the fucking thing in. It, it works. It's, it's what the fucking <laughs> thing's designed to do. I just, I don't know. No, I know. That's why I'm saying it's a smart move because it's taken them so fucking long to do it. So, um. It's like the bloke who invented the car and stuck the steering wheel in and one day just woke up and went, hey, turns out it goes around corners really well with this round thing. Exactly. Yes, of course it does, you prick. So let's go to the panel. Um, <laughs> Mr. Power Metal Gamer, tell us what you think of this. What, the 200cc mod Mario Kart? Well, the, the whole Nintendo Direct thing, including the Fatal Frame thing. Yeah, just talk about 200cc. Oh, I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm completely like... pissed off about those Amiibo cards. Those Amiibo cards are just fucking ridiculous. Like, at that this stage, like, come on. Amiibo cards for Animal Crossing? Nah. Yeah, that pissed me yeah. off. Yeah, that's fucking um, cool. Fatal oh, Frame, though. The newest for new Fatal Frame is fantastic. Uh, always love Project Zero. Amazing game. <laughs> um, finally, it's coming over here, so... I agree with you on that one. Um, Nick, what do you think? Do I ever sneeze, by the way? Because I'm tight. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so, 200cc on Mario Kart. I guess the uh, the second like DLC pack is got pushed up into April, I believe. Yes, it has. If I'm right. Huh? Yes, it has. Oh, nice. Uh, this is going to be... I, I was playing Mario Kart earlier. I was playing the... Uh, we the still need to a fucking... Video and across, you know, platform fucking Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart, you know, fest. Yeah. We should have a Mario Kart party. I think we should have everybody in this thing and we just all play Mario Kart together uh, and then basically yeah. play with our people. I bought you Vin Diesel. Fine. Yeah. I'll be Paul Walker I mean, then. It's. What? I'll be Little Chris. I'm really, I'm really <laughs> resisting a bad joke then. Yes, I'm sorry. Resist. Resist, yeah. Dave. Uh, Xander, who are you going to be? A side note. Oh. Xander's going to be Ava Mendes. I, I, I was going to be Michelle Rodriguez. Oh, God, Xander. <laughs> you just. You, you, you do it again with that voice and that body. <laughs> I'm going to be Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> 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 now you bend over. Your winky is better than hers. Sorry. Yeah, your winky is better than hers. Yeah, as you continue, Nick. So, because I was playing it earlier, and I'm actually getting a the USB Ethernet adapter for my Wii U, so I'm making oh, sure my that? online on it is... Oh, so, so you don't, it, you don't the, do Wi-Fi? I don't want to use it anymore. I was trying to play all the Smash you know, Smash Brothers online with Wi-Fi with like, a couple of the other guys I do uh, podcasts with, which was uh, podcasts with... with ah, I can't even talk now. I'm already getting drunk. Anyway. Sure uh, you are. Uh, basically how my... Yeah, because how my setup is, it, my internet will take an absolute dive, and I can't do crap. So I figured the because uh, the, the the uh, Wii U does not have Ethernet ports; it's just straight Wi-Fi. Oh, that's so right. So I figured because you can get uh, really, 
uh, you know, the US, the USB adapter and solve that problem. So I'll have that Tuesday, order that off of Amazon yesterday. But does that throttle the speed? So, because obviously it's, it's USB 2 on the Wii U, I know that, but does that, like, right. using an, in, an Ethernet through a USB adapter, does that throttle the speed, affect the speed? I don't I've know. I've never noticed that. <laughs> Well, with the Ethernet, regular Ethernet, 9 gigabit, it's one, uh, 10 slash 100 megabits per second, and USB 2 on paper can do 480 megabits per second. Gigabit oh, Ethernet gosh. means that it does a gigabit a second. Gigabit. I mean, they really gigabit. Really gigabit. No, it's never, never going to be at the same Gigabit. Do, 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 do. Gigabit. Do, 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 do. Love red carpet. Gigabit. Okay, um, so Sean, what's so, your... Anyway. Thing? Yeah, go on, Nick. The I'm jacked for the new DLC. I heard the uh, the Mewtwo DLC is coming out on the fifth. Well, can I sorry, Nick? Can I just cut, cut, make you go back to what you said before? Yeah. Which is how much does that cost? Um, it cost me total with the shipping about twenty three bucks. Oh my god, that's pretty fucking reasonable. Yeah, well, that's why I use over. Amazon. Fifteen quid over here. So, I mean, I figured because I couldn't find one, I decided not to run around the three different stores trying to find the thing, so I'm like, screw it, I'm going to Amazon. <laughs> Can't find something in the store, go to Amazon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember, YouTube I did, I DLC. I watched a video on called, do you remember Life Before Amazon? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But like, the Mewtwo DLC for Smash Bros. is coming out on the 15th for those that bought Smash Bros. on the Wii U and the 3DS like I did. So, Jack for that. It looks like, I mean, we're getting... Honestly, the mo- one I'm most pumped for is the Mario Kart 8 stuff. Because I cannot wait to see how balls to the wall hard this fucking 200cc is going to be. That's going to kill <laughs> friendships. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Speaking of killing friendships. Mario Kart 8, the new Mario Party. Yeah, Mario Party killed friendships, and now it's going to be Mario Kart. So, um, <laughs> what about you, Sean? What do you think of this? Well, I never really got to watch too much of it. I got the highlights off of, like, just a couple of articles and that. So, like, they're using these cards in place of actual Amiibos for stuff like um, with the uh, Animal Crossing and that. They, they had talked before about, like, saying that they might try uh, second runs of Amiibos just for the purpose of, like, using an Amiibo actually in a game instead of just collecting the statues as cards. Uh, so you could get a, a chance to get, like, a Wii Fit Trainer or anything like that, but it just being card form. Just have the NFC chip inside of it. Um that's not so bad. Sorry, Thunder. Like I saw your cut. latest amiibo, and I hate you. Is it basically <laughs> um, how much are these cards going to be? Do we know? Oh, um, geez, I'd say I you get no them in a pack. I'd say they, I'd say they, they like include them like in a pack where you get like three different cards yeah. in a pack. I think this is yeah, stupid. That wouldn't be very Why much. don't they just basically release statues like they always do? What what is holding up on the cost of actually releasing these amiibos in spades? It's probably something. because of the application that it is so specialized that they probably don't want to bother going through the expense of producing a statue and just having NFC cards. And they're milk in people's pockets, let's not forget well, that. Oh, that's like right? it, cakes. It's ridiculous. They're selling like hotcakes. All they've got to do is basically do a second series on the ones that are popular I and mean, just fucking release them. It's, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I don't care about buying a third, fourth, or fifth series version as long as I get Little Mac. So, sort your shit out, Nintendo. I agree. <laughs> I really agree on that. Um, so... Yeah, continue, Sean. Oh, no, I was, I was going to say is, like, <clears throat> um, that part isn't bad now. Mar- I've, I've still got to get a Wii U, which is going to be within the next couple months to just finance this time constraints, everything like that. But um, that definitely makes me want to get Mario Kart as well now because, like, you, you know, you have a nicer, even, you know, more intense level of rating you can do. And I, I'm the kind of person, like, you know, I, I like Flat Ultimate Carnage and, and, and the Burnout series where boost and making things go faster is the name of the game. And so, oh, man, I even got uh, Burnout Legends on my PSP there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that all sounds good, but I never really got to see too much more of it. I've just been so bloody busy with working it. I was working until probably about 6, 7 o'clock in April, Fool's Day, so to speak, so I missed out on a lot of that. Got a that few would of the other, make you uh, the fool. Did I was quite the fool. The although, fool to quote I did see that uh, Deadpool trailer with uh, Mario Lopez uh, from Extra. Yeah, it was funny. So fucking good. Oh, my God. I didn't see this. I got to see this after the show finishes. <laughs> oh, I, I even had to show Tam. Tam, uh, Tamara, she was uh, uh, talking about it because she showed a Deadpool drawing. I was like, did you see this thing? She's like, no. I was like, well, I linked it. And she's like, oh. It's like, 
he's actually doing Deadpool like Deadpool's supposed to be Deadpool, not like in that bloody Wolverine movie. Oh, thank God. Oh, God, God. He was that, that movie fucking was Deadpool. terrible. He was, he, was, he was like a zombified version of him with his... Yeah, just, I don't he wasn't Why Deadpool. He was a he was, Why he would was... you take the Merc with the mouth and stitch it up? That's his greatest characteristic from the I, comics. I, I no, really sometimes want to punch screenwriters in the face. It's just like, dude, serious. And it had Skip Woods was one of the guys who wrote it. Skip Woods, uh, for most people who don't know, actually directed the film Thursday. Um, if you haven't seen it and you like the original Punisher movies, um, check it out. Now, going on. Oh, yeah, the original, the original. Oh, yes, the, sorry. The, what, the, the one with Dolph Lundgren? No, not the Dolph Lundgren one. The, the no, no, that one's shit, especially the bit when he sat in the <laughs> <really laughs> uh, naked. The guy from home. Yeah. Um, or now, Ray go, Stevenson? Going on from there, yeah. Well, let's go on from that. Gorilla Games. The guy in the middle. In the in, in other games. I, 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 may, I may have an opinion on this, but. Um, okay, go on, Dave. Um, I'm just, I just, my, I've just got fucking Woody for 200 CC mode. I just, I just think it's, oh, it's gonna be like, it's, 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 Nick, Nick was right. It's, it's gonna wreck. It's not gonna wreck friendships. It's gonna wreck relationships. I'm pretty sure oh. there will be parliaments in the world that are hung because fucking 200 CC mode comes out. And I just, all I know is that anything that makes me go, you know, that fast, that quickly. Is I I I buy her dinner if it was a bird. That'll get your little chap a little bit up to attention. <laughs> one, I can see my friendships ending as well. Like every time I play Mario Kart, it's with friends, and we we do be drinking a lot, and we get aggressive sometimes because of the fucking stupid shells. <laughs> oh, so oh, man, the, the two hundred CC in it, it's shell. gonna be like a blur on the screen. <laughs> I was playing it with my mates the other day, and. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it, the, the, the actual word. I'm just going to refer to it as the C bomb. But I remember pausing the game and turning to my friend and just go, "Did you just call me the C bomb because I beat you? That's harsh." <laughs> hey, you know most people do call you that behind your back, there. I'm just saying. Oh, oh, I'm going to cry. Don't cry. That you should be like. He's like he's one mean C word. If you want, if you want a really, really, really good laugh, by the way, what's my Gran Turismo two um, video? It, there was a response to the Sixty Bit Brothers, where um, I was so invested in the game, and yes, right, I had a couple of beers under my belt, um, and I dropped the C bomb into it, and then spent the rest of the video profusely apologising for using the C bomb word. <laughs> Dave, wait, everybody. <laughs> Uh, just like you know, guys, Guerrilla <laughs> Games unannounced PS4 game to have photorealistic organic and inorganic material. Uh, Guerrilla Games and Sony Computer Entertainment have been keeping the developers' upcoming PS4 game under closed curtains. A career opportunity seeking shader and texture artist gives a glimpse of what can be expected from the game's visuals. So, let's ask uh, the panel here, Xander, what do you think about this? I think it's pretty futuristic. It's kind of weird. Like, we're going to have organic in video games? Like what? Yeah, it's like organic matter in video games. Like in, uh, organic and inorganic materials. And more. So we might see penises, who knows? <laughs> you wish. <laughs> it's, do it's weird, like I don't I don't know how to respond to that. That's that's really weird. Penises in video games. Oh my god. Choniki. <laughs> Oh, I think wasn't the first penis in a video game. Well, what was on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? It was Custer, but um, it wasn't that whole bit <laughs> in. Um, wasn't that whole bit in um, Grand Theft Auto uh, Four where you the there's a, there's a sequence because I never played that version. But, San Andreas um, is that the hot coffee mod? Yeah, and that was and San Andreas, bit, man. Yeah, <laughs> there's a slow shot. Second favorite in there. game of all time. Oh, good man, because I really... That's my favourite Grand Theft Auto game, San Andreas. Nice. Especially because too, you can just uh, eat and eat. This sounds terrible. Just because you can eat and 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 then throw up. <laughs> Does anyone here play Outlast? The, the DLC for Outlast? No, not yet. No. Uh, well, one of my friends were playing it there a while back, and uh, it's fucking funny. You wake up on a table, and uh, there's this guy trying to, like, marry you or something. He's, he's weird... And, uh, fucking, you wake up on a table and you, like, look down with your camera and, like, you can see the guy's fucking knob hanging out, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's shocking that, isn't it? <laughs> well, 
Well, there's a bit in um, (laughs) in Saints Row Four. You can run around streaking, but everything's blurred out. (laughs) Well, in fact, when you create your male character, you can increase a a sex appeal, and it's just giving him a bigger dick. What was the game? Was it Kane and Lynch? I can't remember. I really enjoyed it, but um, there's a whole thing that you got in the nip. It was yeah, there's, a, there's a whole level where you yeah yes there's a whole level when you're butt naked and you've got a pixelated <laughs> ass. <laughs> there's a couple of um, uh, missions in a uh, Saints Row Four where you have to run around naked. It's fucking hilarious. Well, going on the term of going around naked, and I don't know how I'm going to say from this. On live demonstrates <laughs> the fear of an all digital future. Now, Cinelinks has reported that OnLive has just been abruptly announced that their services will be shutting down due to Sony acquiring their assets. Oh, no plans Sony. to keep the service afloat. It might not come to a surprise the service is vanishing because, honestly, who remembered they were even existing? OnLive has been trying to find a really? route for some time now as they switched owners and were constantly trying to sell themselves to console makers. This isn't a problem as we see it as it thoughts, the problem that the service is shutting down and all our customers are totally left in the dark. Now, I'm going to give this, put this out there. This Sony acquiring their assets means that Sony are now the only on all digital service with PlayStation Now, and on live customers are kind of getting screwed here. So, Xander, what do you think about this? Yeah, uh, you dug right. there for a second. Oh, okay. So oh, I got you say, pa- 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 apparently Wolverine got to save a tooth. <laughs> Sean, what about you? What well, you online, online was trying to diversify too much. I was fooling around with the uh, Linux distro at one point of uh, Puppy Linux, and it came with OnLive. Like, this free distro came with on the OnLive client built in when you installed it onto the computer. Now, my thoughts on why Sony did this is not really so much eliminate the competition, but get the best out of what the competition had to offer to probably try to improve their PlayStation Now service more, which... I think is probably the mode of operation they were going with there because they had bought uh, OnLive's competition and converted that over to being PlayStation now. But I guess they were try. Uh, I guess they're finding some things still need to be improved upon. Now, as for the people that are loyal OnLive customers, it's probably going to suck balls from them unless Sony decides to say, "Well, you can transition over to having a PlayStation now." Um, uh, account or something like that, but it, I think this is pretty much the online service dying a, a, a very quick death versus like the drag that life support has been on for a while. Yeah, I, I, I really feel bad for everybody else who's basically paid for this client and who's been using it. The, the other issue they had was the fact that they were getting games that were released six months ago as brand new mm. titles. It was like, really? Yeah, and plus with the with the announced PlayStation, when the PS4 was announced, it kind of single-handedly killed the service anyway, because the PS4 could do everything that they could do, but also provide you with disc-based games. Now, Xander, what do you think about the fact that OnLive is shut down and their assets have been sold off to Sony? I, I, it was going to happen. I mean, OnLive wasn't really doing that well to begin with. It was just kind of like pretty much Sony was just... Buying it just to give it a peaceful death, <laughs> you know, just to put the old dog asleep. Yeah, it was old stuff. <laughs> um, online, so online, let's go. Online. Let's go to you, Dave. What, what do you think about it? Um, it, it was it was on the cards, and I know it, from what from a business perspective, or you know, practicality, what I'm about to say makes no sense. I just feel a little bit sorry for the people who were invested in it and now lose it because. I always like to think that someone would honour their customer base, but... Hmm. Um, speaking of non-gaming related news, IGN has reported that Ash vs. Evil Dead title teaser uh, has been released, so you get to see a little teaser motion graphic of what it's going to be called. So the series has been announced as Ash vs. Evil Dead. It's got 10 episodes for the first season. It's probably going to 2015, and it's also going to be starring Bruce Campbell in the titular role of Ash. What are you I'm asking? looking forward to that. I think I have a word right now. <laughs> what about you, Nick? Uh, I really don't care either way. And on the on live thing, I had no idea they still existed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tag, what about you? I have no say on it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Coolio. Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, we're going to go on to a little break, and then we'll be talking about the main segment of gaming politics. This is why I love this podcast, so, Bohan, by the way, because you're the only bloke in podcast land who affords me the luxury of having a slash break. So let's do it, guys. I'm going <laughs> on a three-minute break. We're basically playing from Vinyl Spectrum, who's basically a band with our great friend Chris Lokes, uh, and it's called Storm of Swords. So let's play it. Vinyl Spectrum and the track was Storm of Swords. So you can check them out. Uh, apparently they're going to be going on tour soon. If you want to check them out, you can head over to facebook.com Chris Locks and he will, well, most definitely point you in the right direction. Uh, and I believe they have a page on facebook.com forward slash Vinyl Spectrum. 
um, and Twitter.com Vinyl Spectrum as well. They're coming out with a new album soon. Uh, great thing is, if you uh, say you're a musician or you work out a band or you've got something or you like to play the skin flute, you can send us your pieces by going to <laughs> igotgameplay at gmail.com <laughs> and we'll be pieces. more than happy to play your music. You just sound like your pimp, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, you would like to send Bohan your piece, then yeah. do such. <laughs> then you can do. Pimpin' um, ain't easy, man. Pimpin' ain't easy. Pimpin' ain't easy. Welcome to Suplex. Uh, now let's uh, basically yeah. talk about tonight's topic. And Xander Scullion was the one who came up with this topic tonight, in, well, inadvertently, so to speak. Because Xander phone messaged me on Facebook and said, hey, look what the hell's going on. Um, and, and a lot of it was just due to the fact that a lot of people in gaming have kind of been ranting. Um... So, we're going to start with that. You now, could almost say they were angry. So. They were angry. You know, the thing about it is... You I see what you did there. The gaming community, <laughs> um, in terms of gaming, has grown stronger. It's become so mainstream at the moment. Since the gaming crash of 1982, there's been controversies that have gone in gaming by spades. Um, we can talk about, basically, YouTube commentaries. We can talk about gaming television shows. We can talk about everything, including the fact where... You have people ranting and raving about certain things, or people even being sued. The fact that things like such as copyright have become a blurred line now in terms of gaming, of who actually owns a property. Now gaming uh, companies are saying that if you purchase a game, you don't actually own the right to stream that game, as the copyright actually extends to the party who created it. So, we can start by that, by talking about a rant that happened recently on the Angry Joe Show. Now, um, I'm going to give him a bit of credit here, youtube.com forward slash Angry Joe Show. That's about enough fucking credit I'm going to give him. And the reason being is <laughs> Angry Joe has been a pillar in the gaming community. Um, he's gone from being a pillar, in my opinion, to a pill. And the reason being is he's gone from Ooh. being someone who's tried to most, use... Most cringeworthy thing he's ever done, by the way, watch his interview when he finally meets Felicia Day. It's absolutely cringeworthy because you just... You can hear him getting hard. Yeah. Yeah, um, just... <laughs> the, the thing is, when it comes to anybody in the gaming community that uses their power, like, for instance, and he's got a lot of stroke. He's got over a million subscribers. He has had, like, call to, to battle in certain opportunities where he was one of the main um, protagonists, in a sense, who were battling Microsoft when they tried to go for an all-digital medium instead of actually doing things mm -hmm. appropriately. He's one of the people that kind of spearheaded the change. He in has had a positive mind. effect. Yes. Uh, in the Xbox One, so I want to give him all due credit from that. But recently, his channel has been going downhill, in my opinion. And it's not only my opinion, this is not an opinion of anybody else on the show, anyone out there in the gaming land. This is my opinion. And to basically cover for that, he's basically... He's been Another hand, you do know we're on the internet, and having an opinion of your own is very dangerous. Well, he's been doing stuff such Sacrilege! As going, talking about certain things that he doesn't do research on, such as Gamergate. Um, and trying to throw himself into situations so that he can basically make a video about it that gets over 100,000 views and more. The recent rant he did was on Nintendo as he purchased a Wii U back in 2014, ran right about December 2014, and felt that things that happened with Nintendo that happened way before them taking people's videos, trying to shut people's channels down and monetizing their videos didn't apply to him for some reason. So he did an angry rant. Now, I'm going to move over to Xander Scullin here, who can talk a bit more in detail about this, because he was the first person to speak up about this. So, Xander, take it away. So, so basically, Angry Joe bought a Wii U, and he says he really enjoys it. He did a uh, Mario Party 10 Let's Play with a couple of his friends, and uh, something happened where, of course, Nintendo uh, said they owned the rights to it, and he wasn't making any money on it. So he made a video pretty much uh, underlying... In the underlying kind of way, he's probably not going to keep his Wii U anymore because, you know, uh, Angry Joe is, is the gamer's gamer. He, you know, he really speaks from the heart and he's very passionate about video games when he's getting a paycheck. Uh, and I say that with full heartily because this isn't the first time he's, he's kind of whined about this kind of, kind of thing. He, I remember when, when YouTube was having the whole copyright issues, he uh, made a video about it, and he was he was almost like crying about it because YouTube is his job. You know that's that's how he makes his money. He even said it himself he had an actual job, but he quit it because he wanted to uh, 
do more stuff with YouTube. And with his copyright stuff, it was kind of crippling the way he was doing his content. He was going to have to change his content and not do it the way he wanted to. And, you know, he was sitting there saying that all he had left was $7 while he was standing behind thousands of dollars worth of equipment. I'm talking about HD televisions, PS4. Mm -hmm. He's wearing a $300 uh, leather jacket. And this this is where it strikes me and it rubs me the wrong way is because I know people who are struggling. I know people who are actually broke. I know people that are, you know, doing everything they can to make ends meet. This guy has a luxury job in the sense that, yeah, it's probably a lot of hard work. I know it's hard work to go out there and make videos and edit them. And especially the content he does with the skits and the green screen. I understand that. But it's a luxury job. He's not out there, you know, making minimum wage shoveling shit. He's sitting yeah. on his ass talking about video games. And for someone to sit there and say that he's broke, sitting behind all these luxury things, I'm like, you know, I've known people that said they were broke and they had to go out and sell that stuff. They've had to get rid of it. You know, they've had stuff repossessed, their cars repossessed, so they couldn't or drive they, to or work. Live so off they of had like four hundred bucks a fucking month and not being able to pay anything including debts so yeah exactly I I know how that feels so so i'm going to tell you guys a little a little website that you can go to it's called socialblade.com and you can put in any youtuber you can put in that youtuber and it will show you an estimate on how much if they had adsense on how much money they would be making angry joe estimated is making seven hundred thousand dollars a year. What a little prick. <clears throat> okay? That is a lot of money. And the way I look at it is that if I was in Joe's shoes, now when I when I said this in the post, people thought I was comparing myself to Angry Joe. I am nothing like Angry Joe. I content wise and personal wise I'm nothing like him. No, well, one, this, no one on this podcast is Angry Joe and we're gonna point that out right now. Okay? No one does the numbers that he does. We're not saying that he deserve, doesn't deserve what he has. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to... Just so be to you, humble, Zander, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's a bit of humble pie that needs to be in here. Go on, Zander. Yeah, what I was going to say was, um, you know, if I was in Joe's shoes and I had fans, like he was saying, fans were like, Joe, why don't you do some more Nintendo stuff? I really like your Nintendo stuff. And he was pretty much saying, sorry guys, I can't do Nintendo stuff because Nintendo says they own the copyrights and they're taking it down. The reason why they're taking it down is because it's fucking monetized. If you don't monetize the video, they will not take it down. So, you could do this. Make your Nintendo videos Go to the fans. Let them know because obviously your opinion matters with over a million subscribers. Obviously, they're eating out of the palm of your hands and enjoy your stuff and really want to see what out, what you're putting out. Do some Nintendo content. Take the fucking loss because you're obviously making just as much money than the average Joe mm -hmm. covering yeah. PS4, Xbox One, and PC. You know, it's the same thing as these Let's Players. You know, I have nothing against people that do Let's Plays on Twitch. That's awesome. But, you know, some of them get really upset when their their stream gets taken down by Twitch because of copyrights. And they're upset because they can no longer make money sitting on their butt 10 hours a day playing video games and people watching them. I'm sorry. It's a luxury, guys. This is not real work. When you're working, you know, 70 to 50 hours a week doing manual labor... And you hear people whining about this, it's like it's like being in a grocery store and hearing a kid cry because he can't have a fucking toy. It's that's, annoying. That's pretty much is. And and I, and I want to point out another thing as well. If Joe likes the money and he wants the the monetization, here's an idea: open up a channel called Angry Joe Nintendo, and post all your Nintendo content on that channel. Have it monetized by Nintendo, and there, voila, you have money. You get twenty five percent, and Nintendo takes the rest. Take the loss. Take the hit. You're still getting paid. There is no mm -hmm. fucking reason why you should be bitching. There is no fucking reason whatsoever. And I agree with Xander. And do you know what? I'm coming from a basically a film, TV background and myself being an actor. A lot of people might say what I do is kind of luxury work. It's not. It takes intense training. It basically takes a skill and it takes you to go and do stuff. A lot of courage, a lot of representation and a lot of preparation. In terms of playing games in front of a fucking TV or doing a Let's Play, 
that doesn't take much work. You've got a camera, you're sitting there, you're being yourself. You're streaming yourself out to your audience. That's all you're doing. You are not mm -hmm. doing anything else in terms of that. And the thing that pisses Michael, me Michael, if I may add, add as well, is I know whoa, people whoa, whoa, whoa. who are actors have to have degrees in it. Yeah, and I've Sorry. got a degree in it. No, I agree, Sean. I've got a degree yeah, in my, it. Yeah, and I, I, I'm friends with quite a few people, even just in this town where it's a theater or arts town, that have their Bachelor of Fine Arts acting. They actually have to go to school for a while, Paul Schacraft, not fucking half-ass it in front of a camera. Yeah, and that's the thing. And this is the thing that really pisses mm. me off in, in terms of what Joe's situation is. You have money, right? You're not PewDiePie. You're not Micropilot. These guys use their fame to create awareness and to basically give money to certain causes. You sit there yeah, and bitch. Yeah, are positive towards causes. Yeah, and you sit there and bitch. I don't care what people mm -hmm. say about PewDiePie. I'm not a fan of his I don't content. watch PewDiePie. Yeah. I'm not a fan of him, but I do I'm respect him. I'm a fan of him as a human being. And the same goes for Micropilot. I'm fine at both of these guys as human beings. And I like Micropilot's content. He's actually got a very sexy voice as well. I'm not going to lie, being a heterosexual male. <laughs> but yeah. guys like Joe piss me off because they're the other side of YouTube. You've got the guys who are appreciative, who understand, who try to create awareness. You guys like Mr. Repsion, guys like Mark Apollo, guys like Pudipa. You've got the humble guys who don't take it as a job. Johnny Millennium, for instance, the happy console mm -hmm. gamer. Rob Man. Don't take it Games for granted. Games ones, like another you one, you know. Yeah. I'll just, yeah. You know, and can I bring uh, Johnny up? I remember when he did the video where he needed a new camera and people open up their wallets and they donate oh. money to him to get a new camera. Yeah, Which, I remember that. I remember the absolute shit. massive amount of hatred he got for that. And but it, he never, like, this is the thing, he never asked people for this money. People offered. Right? I'm yeah, gonna, I'm that, that's, this that's just it. This is, this is what I, I, mean, I, mean, I did a video at the time um, that I got massively trolled on, which is people... Uh, he, 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 he did this. He suggested something. Um, if you don't want to give money, don't give money, but don't go on your fucking moral high horse and go on about, how dare he do this? It wasn't, he, he didn't have a gun to your head and say, fucking give me money. Yeah, you know these, I mean? well, well, the, these same people are going to be paying for Metal Jesus Rocks to basically buy a fucking van and tour the United States. I've got a problem with it. I've got no issue with Metal Jesus Rocks. I'm going to say that now. But the same I people, like his hair. These same people who complain <laughs> about Johnny are going to be paying for a caravan that the dude's going to be using for his vacays to yeah. go and tour the United States and his petrol money. See, and now, I wanted to bring something up about that, because we were talking about it in our in the our Facebook group, the Hey Listen, is, is, you know, it's me, Chrono Link, uh, Cole Annoying Navi, who was on the IGG before, and uh, Zag ZRPG, and they brought it up. I watched the video, I thought the video was funny as fuck, but I'm like... I'm looking at him, like, he, all he's doing, and he factored in all the expenses and everything, you know, the time off of work and what things are going to cost, and it's like, more power to him, you know, if he can hit his goal and, you know, he can do this tour, great. You're and then he's doing for something for the fans, too. Yeah, but you're paying for your vacay. That's all they're doing. They're paying him what? for a vacation. Gonzano? What, what, what really made me feel uh, kind of standoffish about it, and again... Just like, just like you guys, I have nothing against Metal Jesus. You know, I, I do enjoy his content, but, 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 but the thing is, what really, really rubbed me the wrong way is, you know, these, the, these people are on YouTube are normal people, you know, and I think, I think a lot of the problem is, is, you know, a lot of people watch, you know, the people on YouTube and they, they, you're like, man, I'm watching this person, and you get you get kind of like that celebrity kind of feel to it. And I'll admit, I'll, there's YouTubers I've talked to that I've really respected that that I felt kind of like you know like I was fanning out a little bit. I was yeah, like, oh my like god, I can't believe with, I talked to this Johnny person. With Johnny and Rob, we both basically I remember me and you marked out when we were having a conversation with Johnny Millennium. Um, you know, yeah. But th th these guys have had big impacts on our lives, and I agree with you. Uh, continue. But but the thing is though, is like. He he was like, all right, well, we want you guys to pay fifty thousand dollars, donate to us to get an RV so we can tour the country, buying video games, say, buying what, records. What fucking van is he buying for fifty grand? Yeah, but he was like, yeah, probably. Okay, guys, let's have a talk. But yeah, he's a, he's like, you know, I want to tour the country. I want to, you know, film while we're doing this and uh, buy records, buy video games, drink beer, go to restaurants, have a fun time. And here was the kicker. I was like, and you're also donating because we're going to come visit you. 
And that just, it rubbed me the wrong way because I was just like, you're not a celebrity. You're, you're not, you're not a, you're not that kind of, it's not that kind of thing, you know? It's, it'd be like me making a video on my channel being like, yeah, guys, you know, uh, I, I have a lot of friends that, you know, are in the UK, like Dave and Burhan. I have friends that are in Ireland, like Power Metal Gamer. I have friends in Norway, like Irene. You know, I would love to come and let them see me. So why don't you guys pay me some money so I can go and visit them? And it's like, how, how, about, how about you just go to cons? Go to cons and, and tell people about cons and go to those. That's how it used to be. Now it's like, we gotta pay YouTubers for them to meet us? Do you know what? what I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to, you know, interject or uh, we'll cut you off, Sam, but I think the biggest problem with this kind of idea, ideology that people have right now can be ultimately, and, uh, you know, not directly in this case, but blamed on the, the X Factor generation, which is everyone seems to think that life is there for them on a plate and they have to do you know just just walk out click their fingers and all of a sudden people throw money at them and if they don't get money it's not fair I just I, I, I think shows like X Factor Pop Idol or American Idol have just created a very selfish generation well think about it this way as well this is another thing that I didn't think about this takes away it's like even I, I'm the kind of guy as well that had the problem with Zach Braff basically getting donations so he could make a movie you have the money. Now, I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry, Metal Jesus Rocks. You have the money. You've got monetization for your videos. You are making money off your videos. You also said you've got a job that you've that you've obviously saved your money up. Why should people donate to you if you are making this money? This is one of the reasons why I've had an issue about posting a Silent Hill Indiegogo, because I sit there and think. What if people are going to treat me the same way? I want to make this pilot to show what we could do, but I'm second-guessing myself all the time because of people like this. And again, I've got no issue with the guy. I've yeah, but I think it comes down to people uh, can differentiate between the credibility of someone's you know, agenda or plans, if but it makes sense. But it's the internet. You can't. And that, this is where the issue stems from. Great projects like Pixel Noir... Um, which was a great game that was supposed to be funded, didn't get funded because people kept being sceptic. Nigel McGuinness' <coughs> project didn't get funded because people kept bitching and moaning about the project. Good projects are being ignored <coughs> and you're paying for someone's vacation. Do you see how stupid people are being? And I am sorry to, to all these people out there who are donating. Do you see how stupid you're being? Next... You could have, like, fucking Alpha Omega Sin ask you to buy him an easy chair and you'll probably donate to it. This is where <laughs> the problem is. Um, and again, no, no I mean, issue with Alpha Omega Sin. I love the guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, yeah. plus, if he's going to fund a chair, it should be a lazy boy. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? But it, this is what I'm, I'm talking about. It, Bean it's, bag. It's a ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous yeah. concept. People I just want a chair that's got a fridge in the arm for my people beer. People are complaining Sorry. about Patreon and complaining about people giving money to YouTubers, and you're paying for someone's vacation so they can drink beer and buy games. That's literally... You're paying for someone's holiday. Do you know what I mean? And and this is where I, I my mind boggles. Do you want to pay for my holiday? I'm like two weeks off at the end of August you know uh, to spend Maybe in heaven. You should start up a Kickstarter so you can pay off my 20 grand debt and then help me move into a fucking house in Canada. That would be great. This is where stupidity comes in. You've got to see the projects that are worth doing and the projects are not. If you're going to do, say, basically... Although, though, I, and I know you touched upon it, um, but we're, we're, although in, in people's defence, where they spend their money is their choice. I agree with you, but in the end of the yep. day, this is this really irks me, and it's the same goes like, you know, I, I was a bit iffy about the Angry Video Game Nerd Kickstarter when he did that, but... It, I yeah, I'm still, he still bloody owes me a signed autograph. I could see... The, the reason it was a B movie it was his only film he wanted to make it it was a passion project but then you have Johnny Millennium who made his and did it for free released it directly on YouTube but then there's also there's a, there's, Actually, um, speak a question um, sorry I didn't mean to cut you off Karen oh you kill uh, go tag 
Oh, I was talking about a uh, angry video game nerd. Uh, I remember I seen like the angry video game nerd. You know the movie that was up on YouTube. He had it up on his YouTube page, and I clicked into it and I went to watch it. And it was like uh, you have to pay for this through like a fucking card to watch. You have to pay him like a fiver to watch it. Yeah, Weird. that's why he, I still had owes, a he still owes me bloody thirty pounds from his I, Kickstarter. I haven't that even I gave watched the movie. Fucking signed autograph. <laughs> I haven't even watched the movie because I'm like, when it comes out on DVD, when he releases it on DVD, I'll buy it. That's my support. I'm not donating Myself to it. Myself as well. Yeah, I'm not donating to it. I'm not paying for a digital copy of this <clears> movie. <throat> I am buying it. And th- now, I'm the guy also is... I, I feel well, can, I, can I just go... Um, go, um, go um, sorry, when I... I, 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 I can't, you know... Cut you off. Sorry, mate, I forgot your name. Oh, terrible. Oh. In my defence, I have been drinking. Tag. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Tag. Um, uh, see, th- th- there's a difference between, you know, when it comes to credibility and stuff, which is when... People like Johnny Millennium, you know, d- d- do that video. Uh, I, d- <coughs> I, I, I'm just really, really amazed. You know, they're, they're approachable. They, 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 they take yep. their sub base and they don't take it for granted. If that makes sense. So I, I just remember that every time I ever sent him a PM when the fucking inbox actually worked on YouTube, um, <laughs> he responded. Actually responded, and, I, and you know, and it, it, it blew my mind one day. And he just sent me a fucking message <laughs> on Facebook and said, "Hey, do you want to Skype?" I'm like, "Oh, me? Really?" Jo- oh, Johnny okay. Millennium is such a great guy. Like, he subscribed to my YouTube channel when I first started out, and uh, he left a few comments here and there on my videos. He's pretty nice. Yeah, he's, he's that's, that's, that's the well. point I'm trying to make, Tag, which is he's he's. You know, uh, he, he should be disassociated with the, the the crowd of people when they go like, "Oh, he, he, you know, how how dare he ask for this?" Because it's he, he, he's hu- he's a fucking humble bloke. He's a nice bloke. He, he puts his pants on fucking like everyone else does. <laughs> and plus, one of the funniest things I've ever had in my life was he proved to me that his mum was um, from Yorkshire by having her come into the Skype conversation and talk. <laughs> 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 and I just went, oh my god, your mum's fun- so fucking Yorkshire, she makes me want to have a really strong cup of tea with no milk. He's also far right, Dave. He's a righty. He's not a lefty, he's a righty. Yay! Um, but yeah, so um, basically, because you know, I had a conversation with him about politics, I ended well, up stopping... No, what I'm saying is, <laughs> is, is the point, I do, if I can just put this in there quickly, which is, <clears throat> there's credibility between people doing these things. No, I agree. And, and this is the thing. Uh, and, and again, as I said, I'm going to say this again. I have no issue with Metal Jesus Rocks. I have no issue with the fact that he's doing this. I just think this is the same as someone asking for Google Glasses or that girl who set up a Kickstarter. If you, have um, you ever seen Larry Bundy Jr.'s um, thing he does every now and then on Facebook, yeah. which is funny fucking Kickstarters that make me laugh? Yeah, he's one of the ones that pointed out about the Google Glasses so I can, <laughs> see, so I can watch my son grow and all that bollocks, right? Um, His last one was brilliant, which is, by the way, people, I need £50,000 so I can start a YouTube gaming channel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that one. Oh, wow. oh. I remember hearing about that one, but, but I want to squeeze something here on the whole Mel Jesus thing. Go on, if the where I'm, I would draw the line is if he ends up like, let's say he meets his goal and then he doesn't even do it. That's where I draw the line. Like you, the whole Phil yeah. Fish thing, where he got all that money to do the, the game or whatever, and he got all the hay, and they took the money and ran, and he was a complete jackass. See, that's where I had the problem. By but he's entitled to do it. Is, he's entitled to do it. He doesn't have to do it. He could just take the money and run. Um, you know, yeah. the, the only but person... But what I'm saying oh, yeah, is, no, you know, Mel already... Jesus has more character than that. He's going to fall through on it, and, and that's if he hits his goal. Which, honestly, I hope he does. But if he doesn't, whatever. But the, the I thing think is, you should just I... and aim for a Volkswagen camper van instead of an RV. Well, this, this is the thing. This is my my issue with it. And as I said, this, I've got the same issue with it that I had with the Smosh asking for like five hundred grand to develop a mobile app. You know, which they got funded, by the way. Or um, Jesus Christ, how much does a mobile app cost? It doesn't five hundred grand. Jesus, tap dancing Christ. Yeah, and that, and Smosh earn an estimated two million a year off of their own channels. Think about that. Well, why don't you just go to the bank and say, here's my bankable revenue, I'm pretty sure you'll give me a loan. But this is where, where I think the line gets drawn. Some of these guys don't want to spend their own money. And, and I want to go back now, because we're, we're kind of trailing off a track here, to Angry Joe. He's complaining that he's getting no money. As Anna puts it, you have all this equipment, 
I know people, um, friends of mine, who give blood so they've got enough money to... Pretty sure, he could fucking, pretty sure he could put his fucking moustache on eBay for fucking a couple of grand. But you know what I mean? Some people basically have to give blood so they can pay the fucking rent and buy shopping. I live... And I'm gonna I'm gonna point this out, which I shouldn't be pointing this out, but I'll point it out. I live on ten pounds a week for food shopping. Not even lying, ten pounds a week in terms of my own food shopping. It was enough for me to go to the market. I buy. Hex are pretty impressive for that. I've got to say, how do you afford those carbs? Um, so I can Mm. buy salads. I've been living off the same tub of protein for nearly a year. Not even lying there. And the the fact is, I, I think you might want to check its sell by date and then. But no, I have. It's it's basically expires in a couple of years. Um, the the thing that I'm I'm getting at here, people, you're good. Is you can't sit there and try and tell me and bitch and moan and complain and say to me, I'm so impoverished. I'm getting seven hundred grand a week. That's close to a million a year. Seven hundred grand a year. That's close to a million a year. Seven hundred grand. Me and Xander could probably both live off of seven hundred grand for the next four years. Probably even more than that. Everybody in this call could. Yeah, we could yeah. all. I, get I, a house I, I, together. Could, I could buy a fucking yacht, yacht and tour the, the, could, the south coast could of France. Buy, <laughs> a, we could buy a, a house for that mu- for that amount of money and live off the rest of that money for our expenses our bills um, food for the entire probably lifespan of the, the collectively right you're telling me and going the whole woe is me playing the victim bullshit this is where I draw the line and this is one of the reasons why I had an issue with Joe Joe made like a couple of videos at the end of the year his, his end of the year rants sort of thing those videos were badly edited Badly scripted. It had him just going uh, on camera when there's a guy who who actually scripts his stuff usually. Badly done. He's basically become so egotistical with his fame that it, it's it's just getting ridiculous. And I'm, for me, I'm I'm sitting there going, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" I finally unsubscribed after I had enough. I couldn't sit there morally and listen to this dickhead. Mm-hmm spiel his bollocks because I'm so famous um, I deserve more. You don't deserve fucking shit. Remember where you came from. You were working in a fucking value mart somewhere before you hit big on YouTube. Right? It wasn't before a Dale you... that he worked with? Yeah, before you were going with like, to cons. Before you were going with the guy with the glasses right, running with that crowd who, by the way, don't even support you anymore. You are, were making all this money... Who, in his defense, is a very approachable bloke because he's actually responded to one of my emails and sent me a signed autograph, so... Well... Yeah, so, fuck you, James Rolfe. Where's my bloody signed autograph? I paid for your movie and I didn't get shit. So... Yeah, that's, that's, that's my thing here. This is my problem. Know where you came from. Eat some fucking humble pie. And if you really are desperate for that Nintendo money, just fucking create a secondary <laughs> channel, dude. It's not fucking hard. Everyone and their mother has done it. Smosh to the gaming channel with their fucking subscribers from their normal channel. You know, stop... Well, I, oh, can I, I just tag something on there, Burhan? Go on. About the... Uh, now, we've we gone back to Angry um, Joe, which is... Um, which we should never have strayed from because that was our whole tangent. <laughs> um, it's... Do, do you know what, right? Maybe, maybe this is your life. Maybe this is your career. Maybe, you know, you're in a very, very wonderful, luxurious place and fortunate to be able to do what you do. But, um, when when you complain about things like this, it falls on deaf ears, at least with people with me, my, sorry, my ears, with the sense that I, I don't do anything for, on YouTube other than it's a hobby. You know, I'm, I'm very yeah. fucking fortunate to have, you know, I, I still wake up sometimes and think, why do this many people fucking subscribe to me? Are you fucking stupid? Um, but the point is, it's... So don't be complacent. Don't take it for granted. Don't use it as something to achieve something else. Just, just fucking. People subscribe to you to watch you because they like you. So just make fucking content. Don't go on these moralistic trades about how unfair life is. And he can't even do that anymore. Though. That's you want the problem. A fucking Delorean. He can't even make proper content anymore. His content is terrible now. From when he started. Yeah, it has gone downhill. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's because he's not fucking bothered. He just wants to play games with his friends on Twitch. If you want to fucking do that, then do that. Stop By fucking... the way, t- uh, Brian, there's a T and H in bothered. It's not a V. 
I don't Bobby. fucking give Sorry. a shit out of them. I'm <laughs> ranting. Oh my god, um, like tons of the grammar. Zero fucks given. Exactly, zero fucks given. The the thing is, this what bugs me. If you really are that fucking hard up for cash, you really need to learn how to save your money. Get a, get a job. Stop well spending, just sell your ass. You know what? Stop spending <laughs> shit on board games that you don't need. Stop supporting Kickstarters for people that you're going to give you free shit if you hit the high fucking thousand dollar tier. I'll and you, give you a hundred quid for your lovely desk. Which you brag about, by the way, on the internet, on the same fucking place when you do your vlogs, which was one of the other reasons I got put off. Stop doing shit that you know is going to come back and bite you in the ass, and people will support you. But if you rant like this, no one's going to feel sorry for you. Zana, do you feel sorry for him? No. No. Dave, do you feel <laughs> sorry for him? <laughs> um, I, I I like his mustache. Tag, do you feel sorry for him? <laughs> for Uncle Joe? Well, yeah. he got himself into this kind of mess himself, so I don't really know. Yeah. Do you feel sorry for him, Sean? I'll be. I'll... Uh, Sean's not there. Uh, do you feel sorry for him? Sean's trying to find his bomb. No, if you're gonna. Oh, sorry. No, I had it on mute. You know, sorry about that. Complain about, about uh, well, as far as the Nintendo thing with their whole copyright thing. That's a load of bullshit. You know they're monetizing, even if they're, I guess, even if they're just reviews. So whatever. But if you're gonna, don't worry. Act like you're fucking broke, and you're pissed. If you're pissed at Nintendo about their copyright thing, one thing. But if you're trying to make it like, oh, they're making you broke and you're out of money, fuck you. But you just you summed it up perfectly, then, by the way, which is. If they're making you broke, they're not making you anything, yo, because this is just something you do. There's, also, there's no conspiracy, there's no fucking, you know, Illuminati, people aren't conspiring against you, it's just, no, you, you choose to be on YouTube and you're very fortunate to make a living off it, but they aren't making you anything. That's just the rules. I think, I think, I think though, out of, out of the wake of all the rantingness and, all the drama that comes with it. If anything, this should be a sign to people who are in YouTube or maybe want to start YouTube. And the biggest thing is, is, you know, do it because it's a passion. If you're doing it for popularity or if you're just doing it just to make money, this is not what you need to do because, <clears throat> excuse me, because the thing is, is YouTube is just like any sort of media. It's basically uh, a digital type... vo- form of collecting stamps. <laughs> Dave, let him finish. Well, well, the, well, well, the thing is, it's like, okay, it's like being in a band, okay? Uh, you might have that one hit wonder. You might, you might have that chance that you actually are on the radio, you're doing really well. I'm pretty sure all of us have seen behind the music. And, you know, the, the VH1 show, and like, they'll be talking about some band that was behind the music, and they're like, yeah, they were at the top of the charts, they were touring the world. What happened? They let the luxury get to their heads, they spent way too much money, and they became broke. And they, they didn't, and their shadows, their former selves. So, if by any chance you are making some revenue from YouTube, even if you're not, definitely, if you're, if you're not even getting close to Angry Joe, say you're making, you know, maybe $400 a month or something like that, you know, save the money, invest the money, do something with it instead of just, you know, just spending it on everything and looking at this as like, hey, this is a, this is, this is going to be my career. I want to, who the fuck's going to retire off of YouTube? You know, this is, this is like one of those things. Invest it. Enjoy it while you can because you know what? It's part of social media and all of us know if we all had a MySpace account, social media doesn't last forever. There's going to be a time that YouTube's not going to be around anymore. There's going to be a time Twitch is not around anymore. And there's going to be a time that there's going to be new yeah. policies are like put into it that you're really going to have to invest and just do it because you like it. Oh. That's the biggest thing. And that's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. Oh, Go on, Nick. It's funny. You brought up MySpace. This is just a side thing. I'm pissed because I, w- I logged into my MySpace one night, one day, and randomly, and all my fucking pictures were gone. All those pictures I had from high school and everything I had up there, gone. And yeah, I, I lost a lot of shit on my, my, MySpace, too. I did as well. I uploaded and I'm fucking pissed. I had some good right. ones up there. But <laughs> let, let me go on, uh, just like, end this, this little rant on a I'm, I'm upset now. Hang on, no. Shut up. Um, I... T- I really want to see your high school pictures, Nick. This is not, oh, this is not a MySpace <laughs> rant, Dave. Um, 
<laughs> let's, you know, I'm on end of this little I think what, what Nick said on a is true. Wait, is I got back, by the way. All right, um, <clears throat> basically, Dave, then Sean. It's, it's, do you know what, right? You know, in your, outside of, if you're afforded the luxury of being able to make money off <clears throat> social media, um, outside of that, in your actual job, you know, with the way you, you know, fill your car up, the way you're, you're frugal with your, you know, with, with everything economically, you know, you use your brain, you, you, you do it correctly because everyone's hard up for money, but all of a sudden to, you know, do, 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 you know, piss through this fucking money you 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 were lucky at over everyone else to get from being popular on social media, and then turn around and complain that it's not fair. That's just well, why didn't you manage it properly? You, I'm pretty sure you don't fucking go to the supermarket and go, "That's right, people, I'm going to buy the most expensive version of everything." No, because you live on a budget. So, wh- wh- why is it different in social media? Why why all of a sudden are the rules exempt? When you're online. No, I agree. Sense. And then this is the thing, right? No offense, you can take some of that 700 grand you're making, Joe, invest in the housing market. Buy me a fucking DeLorean. Invest Sorry. in stocks and shares. You can invest in stuff that would basically give you a vast return. You could open up a fucking <laughs> shop that sells, I don't know, video games. Yeah, that's, that's the point I was trying to make, Ben, which is, yeah, it's, it's, it's called being frugal, responsible, educated, and understanding of consequences to, you know, wealth, like, to, oh, sorry, oh, God, I mean, oh, now I really have a bug up my ass. But that's the thing, <laughs> that's where I, um, you know, this is, this is where I have an issue. I really feel, I, I, I don't really feel for Joe, the only feeling I have for Joe is anger, uh, because he's someone no that's pun taken, intended. no, but it's sorry. someone that's taken advantage of it, and I agree with Dave. It's like the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. The actor saying, "Oh, we may never work oh. again. We may never have credibility." You've earned four, if five you million. You could retire. <laughs> you've earned four, five million off the fucking movie. You could retire and live the rest of your lives in fucking France in a chateau, drinking fucking wine until your balls fall off. It's like yeah, it's <laughs> like it's like that um, dickhead from um, One Direction. <clears throat> and I, the only reason I kind of don't hate One Direction is. Um, the person who did my theme tune did an amazing cover of the fucking song but um, the guy who left recently and, and he was saying like oh I can't handle the limelight anymore it's not fair it's not this it's not that and like how many people at 22 years old fucking have 17 million pounds in the bank oh that Zayn Malik kid really, yeah yeah no, that's I, I agree. really struggle to find sympathy for you with that Fuck statement one direction. across all the tabloids like I said, I hate them, Nick, by the way, but the only reason I kind of Thank tolerate them is because um, Adam and Joe did a brilliant cover of one of their songs, and they did my thing, too. So. No, but that's, that's the thing. That's, but, the, thing. that's, the, that's the thing that, that <coughs> Dave hit no, the nail on the head. There's logic in there, I know that. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's hits the nail on the head on there. If you can afford enough to live the rest of your life, 750 grand a year, that's basically, if you collect that within three <coughs> years... You earn over nearly $2.4 million. I have no sympathy. Right? Yeah, My either. balls Just on your outfits. face. I, earn a, I work a job where I earn £13,000 a year, and because I have that shit job, it downgrades my TV, and all the stuff that went before it doesn't count for shit, but... <laughs> I still got a smile on my face, and you don't hear me complaining and pissing and moaning about shit and the world being unfair. Much. <laughs> That's it on that one. Now let's go on the Nintendo bandwagon. We're going to go on to the next little bit here of Nintendo. I had something to say, but oh, go Sean. Sorry, uh, let Sean finish off the conversation. We'll move on to the Nintendo bandwagon. Sean. Well, there's a few different levels of this thing with Angry, go- Angry Joe. For one, yeah, it's his income, but at the same time, there are a lot of prominent YouTubers, not only in the gaming community, that have day jobs, that use those day jobs to pay the bills, put a roof over their head and things like that. They don't actually make that much money off of YouTube. A lot of these guys aren't part- or partnered or network partnered, and yet guys like Angry Joe treat this as like a slight, and then they, they almost do this as a battle cry, get their fanboys and fangirls all up in the arms before it. I was actually just looking at a Kotaku, uh, not a Kotaku, a Polygon uh, article. They're, they're there blowing the horn for them as, uh, for Joe as well to try to get him support because, oh, Nintendo's not being fair. Oh, fuck Polygon. They, they've already been proven to be a fucking anti-gaming bullshit. 
Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? And this was the point I was trying to make was, like, <clears throat> a lot of these people act very entitled towards things like this. And a lot of this fanboy slash girlism is really, like, they're, they're not understanding the mechanics behind this. It, this is why people get in trouble for modding video games and things like that and trying to pass it off as their own and why there are copyright strikes and things like that. It, um, uh, another uh, YouTuber, uh, Pat Country, said it as well. You don't actually own this. The same uh, you don't own this media. You have a license and permission to use it and play it. You don't have permission to just straight up make money off of it, turn it out and pimp it out on your own. Same thing with a movie, with movie footage on YouTube or music or anything like that. You have a license to enjoy it. You don't have a license to turn around and make money off of it. You don't get a commercial license out of it. And Nintendo simply wanting their fair share, then him getting butt hurt and saying, you know. Uh, this is getting in the way of me making money. Nintendo's stealing from me. Well, you know, bud, a lot of people try to cover a lot of bases by having a full-time job and things like that, and this is a luxury job for him. He doesn't have to leave the home. He can go around to conventions. He can do a lot of different ancillary things, have a Patreon and stuff like that, and he, he's doing all this, but, you know, he's, at the end of the day, he's acting overly entitled about something where, you know, a lot of other people are getting slapped down, they got to play ball with it, and people criticize, oh, Nintendo's got this whitelist and only certain games are allowed to be played. Yeah, there's probably good reason why. There's probably legalities behind some of these games as well. I mean, they're, um, you know, some things are being figured out now where actually, I think it was Microsoft went on record yesterday as saying, uh, you could actually probably see Banjo from Banjo-Kazooie in Smash Brothers because they've actually had good, re Microsoft and Nintendo's actually had good relationships over the ownership and use of rare characters post-Microsoft. Like, they're, you know, they've had to negotiate for things like with the GoldenEye game and things like that. But long story short there, there's a lot of legalities in, in the stuff and probably plans that Nintendo has made is why there's this whitelist. But you, you see people just clamor blindly to support this cause of this person making this money. And yes, if they have certain good points to be made, but if they're not being, uh, if they're not showing gratitude and things like that for where they've gotten to because of these people and they're just taking money in and they get butt hurt because they lose a little bit of that money instead of being humble about it, like the fact that they're forgetting, they're forgetting that this is a cost of doing business in this market and the, like, well said. YouTube, social media, and anybody's head of MySpace will tell you, like, you know, nothing's forever. You could turn around two, three years, and then YouTube be, goes the way of the dinosaur, so to speak, and another, you know, company comes out. It could be Amazon Video in two, three years. God knows. Uh, we don't know how this is going to go, but, you know, yes, invest that money. <clears throat> Put all the eggs in one basket. Don't piss it out of door and fucking uh, DeLorean or, you know, top of the top stuff. I maybe, do this maybe buy DeLorean. Yeah, if you know you can afford it or turn around and sell again afterwards. But I mean, like, I'm using it for my channel and it's, it's a hobby. I, I have a job that gets in the way of it a lot of times. But, you know, I'm using a six year old computer. I only capture 480p with an $11 capture device. I'm, you know, I'm not really, I'm you know. Very, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, you do that. Benway does that. A lot of people do that. And I mean, it's out of necessity, not try to get out of, you know, copyright claims or anything like that. It's because I you don't have really, it really hit the nail on the head, Sean. I, I, I think um, yeah. people in this position should, you know, adopt the following phrase, which is when you look at the people who support you, um, accept them, don't expect from them. Yeah. And that, that's the main thing here. Now, we're going to go on to yeah. Nintendo a little bit as well and, and go on the other side. The Sorry, sure, I didn't mean to cut you off, um, by the way. Because we're going to talk about a couple no, of... No, 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 that of, was the point I made. A couple <laughs> of gaming politics and where politics have been used. Um, and here's another one. About Nintendo monetizing content. Now, what Nintendo have done, they've operated a new system, basically, uh, which we've talked about kind of candidly on I Got Gameplay. And I'm going to go and throw this back to Xander again to talk a little bit about this. Uh, Nintendo are offering people who, like, if you're playing Nintendo content, to actually partner up with them, but you have to have a channel that's exclusively Nintendo content. If there's anything else on your channel, they won't monetize you. Xander? That's a fucking commie. That's bloody commie. Xander, that's like... Go for it. <sighs> Speaking of commie, Bill, if you guys watch the gaming, uh, the, the, the game theory about Mario being a communist, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's a pretty funny video. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Nintendo, I mean, they're, they're trying, to, Nintendo's doing what Nintendo does, and that is, um, try and monopolize 
trying to take take something in and narrow it down as a funnel to help them out. They did it back in the NES days. That's why the Sega Master System didn't do too great in the U.S. And I mean, it's it is what it is. I mean, I can't I can't really get upset about it. I mean, they're they're doing what businesses do. If Nintendo wasn't doing it, some other business would be doing it. You know. I totally agree, and, and this is the thing. Um, I Nintendo, like I have a, a very storied history of Nintendo because a lot of people just like, well, Nintendo have monetized my videos. I hate them. Nintendo tried to shut down my YouTube channel because I wouldn't give them, um, you know, copyright basically over a, a video that I did that they didn't own, which was Scribble Notes. Me and Zander talked about this a lot. I can't believe you got that much shit over that particular game. Yeah. Uh, which was owned by WB Games, and after I basically said to them, yeah, go and take me to court over a video that had 24 views, they ended up giving me my fucking channel back because they lost the case, because I was like, yeah, take me to court, sue me, I don't fuck, give me extradited to the United States, I don't give a fuck, uh, or Tokyo, mm-hmm. wherever the fuck you want to get me extradited to. The, the, the thing <laughs> is, I should be sitting there doing the same thing as Joe and going, Nintendo fucking sucks. I love Nintendo. I've got a love-hate relationship with Nintendo. Capitalists do what communists don't. My Sorry. issue, so my that. issue with Nintendo is there was a court case that went on um, from Nintendo versus Universal, and it was over the rights of King Kong. Universal basically went around <coughs> to several different gaming companies and gaming partners, such as ColecoVision, um, such as Atari. Such Thank as you for saying it correctly, by the way, Bohan. Thank you for saying it correctly because you normally say Coleco. Right, such as um, basically the arcades. And they went after Nintendo. Now, all these companies basically backed down and, and paid Universal these royalties because they went, yo, we own Donkey Kong. It's our right, it's our property. Fucking give me money. <coughs> they then threatened to sue Nintendo. And Nintendo's lawyer, Jack Kirby, just basically went, okay, take us to court. They're like, what? Take us to court. <laughs> take us to court. Because what are you going to do? They went to court and then he found out and revealed that the fact that the property basically of King Kong is not owned by Universal, that the license itself was actually um, under free license. It was public domain. Thus, it's a Universal, fucking ape! Yeah, you can't, you can, yeah, it's thus, ridiculous. Universal it's had like no claim to into a it. zoo and not being able to take a picture of a fucking monkey yeah. because you might get sued by a motion picture company. But this is the thing. <laughs> Nintendo... Uh, you know, then counter sued, and then they they won, and then the other companies sued <laughs> Universal to get their money back that they paid them in royalties, including ColecoVision. Um, <clears throat> now, what after all this happened, um, and, and basically these scare tactics have happened, Nintendo have always basically, if you look down in history, had an issue with piracy and copyright. Why did the N64 exist? Because they had an issue of piracy and copyright. They didn't want to leave cartridges because they knew that people would pirate and copy their games as soon as they made And yet people discs. still circumvented that. Right. So Nintendo are very mm-hmm. edgy in terms of the internet, in terms of piracy, in terms of copyright. I'm not condoning what they've done or what they are doing. But what I'm saying to people, there are other channels to go through. If you want to partner up with Nintendo, create a new channel. My great your audience over to that channel for exclusive Nintendo content. Isn't like the Wii U discs and the Wii discs, they're like, they're not DVD discs, they're not Blu-ray discs, they're some some other sort of uh, format. They're HD DVD. They're they're they're, they're HD DVD. They're actually bought off of, um, they they bought the rights for the HD DVD off of Microsoft. Yeah. Believe it or not. Mm. Uh, No, it wasn't off Microsoft, it was off of, um, it was, Sony did the Blu-ray. JVC. JVC. Yeah, they bought it from yeah, JVC. Yeah. Um, so they, they basically own the exclusive rights to HD DVD now. Um, now, Nintendo, wow. I'm not saying are, you know, they are a big company. They earn Talk billions. about a dead format. The, the fact that they basically, <clears throat> are, they have billions from, you know, um, from fucking from, Amiibos. Yeah, for the Amiibo sales, for <clears throat> their retro console sales, from brothels, uh, from brothels, <laughs> sex hotels, you name it, and Nintendo have basically done it. They have enough money, and I, I call Princess that. Peach every night and on a sex I, line, and I it's understand totally worth the It's like when you pirate a movie, um, and you say, "Well, I'm not hurting a big studio." In the end, you are taking something that is not yours. You are using something in a means that there is a legal grey area, and because YouTube are very pro content creation, 
Do you know what I mean? They're, they're very pro uh, copyright with certain companies. So if someone puts a claim in on a video, and then you, if I got gameplay in the Retro Unlim Network, that happened, if everyone remembers, when we had a video taken down because some stupid idiot felt they owned the copyright to it. YouTube we beat will, them, though. You beat them. Yeah. You beat them, though. YouTube will act before they basically, you know, before you're proven right. You have to prove yourself right. But then I'm, I'm not, I'm not defending against. YouTube with what I'm about to say, but you can kind of understand in the sense which is, you know, they don't want to get sued as well, so even though we find it a little bit harsh with copyright rules, or even though I fucking think their copyright rules um, go against Act 107 or whatever it is, um, are very stringent and strong and not fair, but kind of, you know, and the t- oh my God, I'm going to defend a corporal giant. Um, oh my God, I think I just sold out. Um, you, you can't blame them because at the end of the day, they still got a wallet and it's, you know, <laughs> the lawyers can come after them as well. Pretty much. Now, I'm going to throw it to the panel here. Xander, do you think Nintendo are in the right for all the mo- moves that they've been behind? Uh, I think I think some of it's been right. I think the way they've been uh, putting it off and, you know, kind of trying to educate the people about it, it's been the wrong way. I think that, I think they they need to do a little bit more explaining but I mean, it's their property. I mean, if I had, I think of it this way: if someone took my song and that I own the rights to, and they made a video and they were making money off of it, and I wasn't making any money off of it, hell the fuck yeah, I would copyright, it, and hell the fuck yeah, I would want my money for it. And that's what Nintendo is doing right place, now. You can't blame saying, them. Yeah. Dave, yeah. what about you? Um, <clears throat> it's it's a <clears throat> sorry, Gacky throat had a kebab tonight. Um. Obviously, it's Saturday. Um, oh yeah, it's it's uh, what um, uh, as Anna said, which is it, it's you know we 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 can piss as much piss and moan, you know, in the, as a you know the people in the small pond at the bottom of the spectrum, but when it starts to come to you know copyright and liability and affecting someone's income, whether I agree with how stringent they are upon the rules. They're a company, you know. They're a massively global company. They got, they, they got. That sounds terrible. I'm not. They, they got to make. I'm not saying you know just one dollar a month will help Nintendo, but um, you know they, they they're, they're within their rights to protect their copyright, but at the same time, possibly think they might be going a little bit batshit crazy on how they do such. They are going a bit bit mad, all right, yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, I I'd do. just like to say um, I bought a new electric fag tonight, and I'm really not enjoying this flavour. But there you go, guys. Um, let's go to you now, Nick. Nick, what do you think? What Dave said, Nintendo. You know, every company has a right to protect their copyright, but you know, there are certain you know, copyright. If they're trying to take down videos on, you know, reviews, you know, that's violating copyright law. So. I agree with him to an extent. If someone's just blatantly uploading, you know, the entire game as a let's... Like, if they're doing a let's play and they're not talking over it, it's just, here's the whole game, watch. Different story. But they have a right to protect their own, you know, intellectual property. Talk? Well, I agree with what Sander said about the music. Uh, if he had music, someone thought could make money off of it, then uh, it wouldn't be fair, you know. Um, but I suppose, like, if you look at it this way, they're getting more uh, recognition by YouTubers playing, like, and showing showing their products and stuff. So, if anything, like, they, Nintendo should be like paying people the fucking to show their shit, you know. Oh, that's what they're doing with the sorry, party sorry, program. Good point. Yeah, because that kind of comes that, back to um, something I forgot to say in my thing, which is the the double edged sword is at the end of the day on us all, you know, us let players giving them fucking free commercials. Exactly. But but see, the thing is, is that's where the that's where Nintendo's trying to do the uh, content creators program. That's that's the that's the thing yeah, is the, with the content yeah, creators program. Yeah, only have to 
have just Nintendo stuff on your channel. You can't have anything else but Nintendo stuff on it, and that's kind of shit. Yeah, exactly. Good. What, what was that? I, I do, I do, that's I do like, agree with that. That's like basically Russia saying you can promote our country, but only our country. Otherwise, we'll shoot you in the head and you'll meet a bullet-related death. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's. it's Fucking censorship, basically. I know, but they are for an olive branch. When it comes and also, to it's basically Nintendo saying, we know that we're a big company, we're an important player in, you know, the world of gaming, but basically, suck it up, pull your pants up, don't get raped in prison, you're playing by our rules, sugar tits. Well, that's pretty much what you, <laughs> play, you either play their rules or don't play at all. It's simple as. Um, so, Sean, what about you? Well, I mean, yeah, the, logistically, starting up another channel that is all Nintendo based is easier on them because they can mo- they don't have to monitor content on your channel that you might be doing Sony stuff one day and Microsoft <laughs> stuff the next and uh, doing reviews of uh, some little Samson homage homebrew or something like that. Yeah. At least then the product stays consistent on that channel. It's about Nintendo. Then the the same creator could turn around and have a sister channel. It's all Sony, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it, and it's good that they're at least letting you break off a piece instead of saying, well, fuck you. No, you're not going to make any content whatsoever. It's like, no, you can, and we would like to help you out. We are going to take a cut, but you know what? Other networks take a cut, too. They're Don't like sign the budget line uh, players. in the contract. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing. That's the way that it goes in terms of situation. Um, I have a backup channel, by the way, because I really it sounds really, really stupid and me being needy and a beanie baby collector. Um, I have a backup channel of Lawn Boys Post 1975 that I managed to register by putting the first uh, letter in lowercase. So I might dabble with this. I might I might play with the devil, if you will, and um, <laughs> you play with more. You get born, son. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, but they're, they're, well, by the way, Nintendo, you put one dirty little finger on my main channel. I will do absolutely fuck all because your lawyers are better than mine. Um, in fact, I don't <laughs> even have one. But I, I, I might, you know what? I might, I might make a video series about this. I might dabble with taking my backup channel and running with the Nintendo thing. You have every right to, Dave. Now, um, going on from that, we're talking a little bit more about gaming politics. If you just tuned in, thank you very much for tuning into our channel, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and good evening, Mr. Retro One Lim, of course for joining us on the show. Hi, Stacey. Now, we're going to basically talk about one other thing and talk about basically gaming transition um, from gaming media. Now, we've transitioned from cartridges to discs, and now we're trying to transition from discs to digital media. Um, we we're talking a little bit about that, so you've looked in, if you own an Ouya, you already own a console that does digital. Every time someone own, says the word Ouya, I just want to say boya. Yeah. Sorry. If you own a phone, you have apps, which again is digital content. Uh, digital is very easy more to dri- distribute. Companies actually have a better facility for them, and shops such as game stores would become irrelevant in order for these things to happen. But a lot of companies are pushing these. Since uh, 2013, when Microsoft tried to push their idea with the Xbox One, when they first did the initial um, screening of the console, and they were going to that bit them in the ass. That I was saying that to Xander much. earlier, man. It fucking goddamn! Like, if everything went digital, like everything would be just so bland, like. But now Sony are trying to do it now with PlayStation Now, which is basically allows you to actually play PlayStation on your televisions, on set-top boxes, you, plus the PlayStation TV box that you can purchase, which is like a small little Vita, uh, your Vita consoles. You can play it anywhere, so it allows you to access 24-7 to PlayStation content, but doesn't give you ownership for said content. So it's only allowed to be there as long as you're subscribing. Now, it's like thing with physical, gaming. but think about physical things like you can lend it to your friends. You, if you don't with it, you can just give it away to someone. Like you can't do that with digital content. Well, you can with no. certain content. Now, Xander, you own a PlayStation Four, so I want to get, throw this back to you. It, it seems like me and you are co-hosting the show today, um, but I want to bring it back to you because you own a PlayStation Four, and we, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Microsoft's standpoint and what happened and how it bit them in the ass. In terms of a political way, doesn't it seem that gaming in general has become this thing where they're trying, you, you have these companies trying to dictate what people should do, but it is kind of biting them back in the ass. So tell us about what you do with PlayStation 4, because you were telling me an interesting little story about Bloodborne and how you were able to kind of share that game without purchasing it. 
Yeah, I mean, they got the share play, and actually I'm doing that right now. I'm letting uh, my friend Amanda play my Bloodborne game, and we've been <laughs> switching back and forth, and she's helping me level up. But yeah, it's really cool. But I will say one thing that's really pissed me off about PS4. Um, yesterday I was trying, I was having some problems with my internet, and um, I wasn't online on my PS4. And you remember when the Xbox One came out? Uh, what was one of the things that people really complained about the Xbox One when it the came to, it to the system? It's be online even when the system wasn't even on. Exactly. Yeah, the always online thing. Well, I couldn't play Bloodborne because I didn't have internet connection. The app wouldn't even start up. That's the, the really? Game. That wasn't uh, Sony's situation. That was more due to the game, wasn't it? No, that was it. Was the actual like? It was the ad, the application of the game wouldn't start. Ah, I see. I would try it with other games too. Apparently, Did you put the, the digital had... copy? No, I have a physical copy. All right, it's weird. Yeah, it's yeah. I was like, um, this is kind of weird. Yeah, I even tried another game because I was kind of curious, and I think it's kind of weird that you know if I don't have online connection, I can't play my PS4. And isn't it funny? That's exactly what we were bitching about with the Xbox One. Funny. But that's pretty much it. So, guys, um, if anybody else out there on the <laughs> PlayStation 4, make sure you check it out um, and, and see if this is actually a, a thing or if it's just Xander's console. Um, but, yeah, we, we're going on to that something, PlayStation. Yeah, go on. So, uh, something similar happened to me with my Xbox uh, One there a while back. Um, there was something down. Uh, Microsoft was down. Uh, the Xbox One was down. And uh, what was it? Fucking... I was trying to get in. I have like a password that I sign in, and uh, I was trying to play a game, but it wouldn't let me onto my profile, so I couldn't play my game. So it was very weird. And that's another thing as well. Digital gaming is basically it's kind of more ownership over copyright. So if they know that you're not playing it, or if the account that you're using isn't isn't basically your account, they won't allow you to access the game, even if you own the physical copy of that game. Um, Microsoft basically took a huge hit because of this in 2013 when they introduced the Xbox One being always online and also um, that you had to install discs straight to the hard drive. Fans took exception to this and got it overturned. So now uh, Phil Spector basically has the console itself have no connect activity on it. So you can take the connector out of the console. You don't have to use it. Um, secondly, that you can play games off discs, but they eliminated certain things such as the family share feature, which would allow you and every member of your family to play um, on said consoles. Now, um, let's let's move on to the panel here. Nick, tell me a little bit about this and what, what did you think about it? What was your opinion on it? Uh, and do you think that they're still trying to make this a reality, especially with PlayStation Now, PS4 share play, um, and, and also the fact that they've got, they're trying to use constant internet connectivity? Yeah, I, honestly, the whole constant internet connectivity thing pisses me off. Just because not everyone has good internet connection, and there are points in times where my internet decides to take a dive and I'm fucked. But obviously, with you know Sony buying on live, you know they're trying to get a monopoly on this market. <laughs> yeah, Sean, what about you? Well. Sorry, I, I just need to back up a little bit. Uh, we were talking about like um, Sony, the PlayStation Now, and its services for like uh, renting digital versus actually having physical. Well, it is the way of the future for some things. Like the death of on live uh, just demonstrated to us: you can have your money locked up and all that, and and then turn around and then it's gone the next day. Or the whole having to be connected online just so you can verify that you're legally playing a game. And that's, you know, you've downloaded through their service on your system anyway. Now, I do like the concept of uh, PlayStation Now. It's pretty much Netflix for Sony games. You know, it's great, you know, especially now, like, where I live to, most everybody has fiber op internet. The least, the lowest speed, Mr. Wade there with the elephant in the room uh, is uh, going to oh, be sorry. really mad about hearing this. But the slowest, no, but the slowest speed you can get here uh, with fiber op is 85 megabits per second. So, which is, you know, more than adequate for streaming a game on the PlayStation Now network. But um, the thing is, is that, yeah, with a physical copy, you know, you can lend it out to a friend or anything like that. Yes, you know, there are certain share programs where you can, you know, share it out. But I don't know. Like, uh, I'm very tactile. I like the feeling of physical go physical game. And, like, I remember even LGR uh, did a video on it where 
there were digital only games that in certain territories actually had a physical release like DuckTales Remastered I think in Europe was released on PlayStation yeah, 3 or something like that as a f- yeah, physical disc. We got on disc. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, as oh, well no, as a few other PC it, games. I have never seen it on disc in this country. Xbox yeah, yeah I've, seen, I've seen it on disc over here in Ireland. Ireland so. Yeah, Xbox 360 PlayStation yeah. 3. The only console it wasn't released on disc was Wii U. Oh, there you go. That's right. Yeah, yeah I, I have. I had the disc. I had the disc version on Wii U. <laughs> Lucky fucking amazing game. And yeah, it, and that's the thing. Like it, 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 it. Say Wii U. Sorry, Dave. Uh, let's talk. <laughs> oh no, no. I was just gonna say that. You know, it is nice to have that physical disc there. And then you know, if shit uh, goes down. Like you know, the service ends up being bored because. What about Xander's game in a few years when they kill that online service so it can't verify that game for him anymore if they haven't put in uh, steps for legacy support? Xander can go play that game one day, and because that online service is no longer there, even though he has that console plugged into the router, and it's not going to verify his game, he can't play his game anymore. Yeah, and games are becoming more it... online reliant as well, such as Destiny, mm-hmm. Bloodborne, as Anna's actually stated there, <clears throat> um, Dark Souls. Games are basically... What, not... what was the game on the PlayStation 3 that, uh, was it, I, I forget what it's called, um, cause I, well, I don't own a PlayStation 3, that was Destiny. basically the only thing about it was online. No, we're talking like five years ago, and it was, it, it bragged Bag, about it? being the greatest first person shooter ever. Well, um, yeah, because it was you had... wasn't it? Yeah. M-A-G. Yes, that's it. Yeah, Dave, sorry. You own a game that's online only, and that's uh, basically Titanfall. I remember when you popped it in your console and you had no internet and you couldn't fucking play it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, that that was really annoying. <laughs> and I actually bought, I actually bought that game because I knew. <clears throat> I went to my supermarket. <clears throat> sorry, the kebab keeps biting me in the throat. Um, I went to my supermarket that night and I, I had no internet because. I, I, I really, really quickly want to say it's why I got kicked out, and I have to say it because I hate British Telecom. Dear British Telecom, you fucking bunch of Coronation Street watching wankers. Why am I paying you £35 a month, you twat? Holy shit, Sorry. you're paying 35 quid for that kind of service. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's um, there's a long-distance phone thing in there as well, but my, my point with that is... Fuck you, British Telecom. he's paying it 60 is. bucks. Think about that, 60 bucks for that service. Yeah, and, and really, basically said service. when I phone them up, which is, and and this is what annoys me because right, I live in the burbs, so I understand that my internet from you know my location comes down to phone lines. But why don't you say this, British Telecom? Which is, by the way, if you don't live in an area that you can have fiber optics, here's how it works: pay us thirty five quid a month for your TV package as well. They do my TV package as well. That's why it's so expensive. Um, apart from allegedly the hooky sky thing I have set up, allegedly people, before you sue me, um, and say, by the way, um, every time it rains really hard, or it's, and this is the one that really annoys me, or it's really sunny and hot, you might lose your internet. Oh, you don't, do you, British Telecom, because we wouldn't fucking pay for your service. Only I have to, because the only other person I can't have... <laughs> The only other person I can go with in this area is worse than them. So, basically, I'm fucked. Anyway, land oh. aside. Uh, see, see the way the PlayStation uh, Plus, with that PlayStation Plus subscription, if you, like, buy games uh, digitally, and uh, say your gold or so, uh, no, say, say your PlayStation Plus runs out, uh, don't Sony, like, take the games back from you? You haven't got the license that's to really? have them anymore. If your PlayStation that's only on the, is gone, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the oh free games. Same yeah, one at a time. Sound off. Yeah, I was about to say that was the the free games that you get on PlayStation Plus that you get to download. Like you get to download, you know, a couple of games a month. I wish they had more games on the PS4 for PlayStation Plus, but yeah, you can if download the PlayStation them. PlayStation Plus and, uh, runs out, they t- they take the games away from you. Yep. A matter of fact, if you go to those games on your PS4, it's actually it actually counts. It's actually has a countdown on it from from the day oh you God. bought PlayStation Plus and you download it. It'd be like you have three hundred and like twenty nine more days to play this game. So it's like the Wii U demos that really fucking annoys me, and the 3DS demos, which is the you only get a certain amount. That's yeah. fucking bollocks. That's bollocks if, right there. If, if you blow some of my interject for a minute. Um, 
Microsoft's Xbox Live Gold for uh, not for Xbox One now, but 360 offers that similar service. Now I got silver now, but games I downloaded on Gold still work. And this yeah. is yeah, no, two yeah. years that, after. That's, yeah, that's, that's because, because, well, yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And and like I did have one issue with them before, but this was because uh, it was a glitch in my account. I had my uh, credit card set up so that it would automatically pay out my Xbox Live Gold. And that credit card I ended up uh, uh, oh, getting oh, rid of. Renewal. Yeah, yeah, like I had an automatic renewal set up, and I got rid of that credit card, and all of a sudden, like $40 in DLC that I had bought for uh, Fallout New Vegas and things like that weren't working. And I had to be actually on the phone with Microsoft Support, and they determined that there was a glitch in the way the billing works, that if your credit card is cut and you don't actually go in on your account, you delete that credit card from your account, for some reason... Anything you download or digitally, you cannot play. It's like, oh, even though you paid money for it, you cannot touch it. That's but stealing from you. For me. That's stealing from the oh, consumer. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. And I was very irate on the phone with them. They said, yes, sir, we understand. This is actually like, no, it's like this is actually pretty illegal. It's like, I paid you guys for all this DLC and everything. I can't touch it now. And they're like, no, sorry, we'll fix this up. We, have, we had a fucking contract. Yeah. The minute well, they you pay money for something. A legitimate legal, you know, contracty obliging contract. So that's fucking. Ooh, there's a grey area right there. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, right. Okay. Well, going on that, guys. Oh, no, no. There's been tons of politics in gaming. If you can, name can I quickly say something really on, quickly then. that just ties into this, which is um, when I, well, I'm very proud of this fact. I know this makes you sound sad, but that I still got the same email account I had um, from college, which is ironically. Um, Long Boys Post, and um, because I set up my Xbox, uh, uh, you know, online account with longboyspost dot com, not dot co dot uk, um, they think I'm in America, and it's really, really fucking awkward and uncomfortable, and because I only do it once a year, and frustrating that every time I renew my uh, Xbox Live account, which, to be honest, I haven't done in a while because. Well, there's fuck all our stuff I want to play online. Um, it, 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 when I when I try and do it, it goes. We don't recognise this card. We don't recognise this voucher. You're not American. I'm like, no shit, sugar tits. I'm fucking English. Um, so I actually have on my Xbox uh, a secondary account where. Um, it's it's set up in England and it always makes me really nervous when I have to renew it because you know when you pay pay for your um your year subscription it's a lot of money. Um, it always makes me really nervous to put it in because I only do it once a year and I don't want to fuck it up. But I I have to basically because fucking Microsoft seems to think I'm an American. No offense, America, I love you. Um, not so much Obama, uh, but. Yeah, I have to fucking log into a secondary account and put my credit onto that account and then keep my fingers crossed that when I log back into my American account, you know, air punch there, or quotation fingers, it shows up. And they they tried to address this three years ago and they said, like, it turns out that we realized that some of um, our customers have this really weird, inconsistent problem with about registering money. So we've decided to fix this. And I was like, oh, I was rubbing my hands thinking, yes, thank you for finally making it easy for me to fucking put my credit in. And they just went, if you live in Poland and the Ukraine, it's now even easier to log into Xbox Live. And I was like, yeah, but what about the fucking UK? Are we one of your biggest markets? And you've just completely fucking ignored us? Oh. Sorry, rant, rant, rant aside, but I just want to end it with this, which is, Microsoft, I, I enjoy your console, but go fuck yourselves. Well, on, <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go on to the plugs, and it, just tell us your story of gaming politics. What have you been through? What's been going on in your minds, and what's been happening? It's been an enjoyable show, and I have to give a great big thank you to Tag for joining us tonight. Um, made a made a rather awesome show itself. I've got to give a great big thank you to Xander as well. If you want to check out my channel, youtube.com for such a nerd genius. There's a fun little video with Xander on there, uh, and I've been oh, it's fucking hilarious. I watched, I watched the video the day. <laughs> I've been harassing. <laughs> I've been harassing Xander with memes and videos alike this week. We're also um, partnering to do a new show, a new segment on Xander's channel called E Tank. 
Uh, episode one should be debuting. You just made that sound like a sex video, by the way, but it is. We're part- um, it is, and uh, basically, uh, erection to- tank. <laughs> yeah, if you want to if you wanna check that out, it's going to be debuting quite soon. I'm nearly finished on the edit of the video. I think Sam's going to love it. Um, and we don't debuting- we doing cancel by the way. But he'll be debuting on the Exodus Gaming podcast uh, YouTube channel, of course, Xander Scullion. Check him out on the Exodus Gaming podcast wall as Xander posts a new um, episode on there, and also uh, Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Exodus Gaming. Uh, he's actually pretty awesome. And um, now going on that let's go to the plug so tag start us off where can we find you uh you can find me at uh, power metal gamer 88 at youtube just type in power metal gamer it'll pop up somewhere <laughs> t- t- tag I'm a, I'm a i'm a lazy bastard can you um find me on facebook and just well i think link. mike tagged us in the video on facebook there so um i'll leave the link in the uh, underneath the video no, I just I just really enjoyed chatting to you tonight. So, um, but, but they'll they'll back me up. I'm a lazy bastard, so just do the work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your account details, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll subscribe through your account. Go for it, Dave. Where can, lazy, we, where can we find you, Dave? And please, just plug your channel. Don't go dark. Shut up. Right. You can find me on the grassy knoll. In the 60s, in Texas, looking up at the book depository and thinking, that would be a really good place to blow a president brains out. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Did they say book sorry. depository? Wow. Sorry, sorry, Tag. This, this, this is, um... Uh, God, I got, I got Lord Post, 1975 on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube.com. We, we, don't, we don't, I don't plug myself anymore. I let Burhan do it. But you can also every time we Dave, plug ourselves, I just go dark. So you can also find Dave and free. myself on Thursday nights on YouTube. Burhan and the boy. Uh, we need someone to make a theme tune for us. So if anyone's proficient in music and you want to make a theme tune I got for another us one, Dave, by the way, that's even more darker. If you want to find uh, me and Dave on there yeah. and produce a YouTube uh, a, a theme tune for us for our show, I will be mo- more than grateful for Just you. Just ask Xander. He's good with his music. Uh, he is very good. He's great at playing the skin flute as well. He's played like it. He plays like an <laughs> ocarina. Um, so, Xander, where can we find you? <laughs> well, well, yeah, you, you kind of plugged me earlier, but yeah... <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, youtube.com slash uh, Xander Scullion. You guys can sh- uh, check out my YouTube channel there. I'm going to be uploading a video very soon. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Randy. It's Randy. Um, <laughs> you shave it. I was going to say. <laughs> it comes well, out of nowhere. <laughs> it comes out I was of nowhere. Say Go on. <laughs> As I said, I was going uh, to up- upload a video very soon. That uh, I'm, okay. I'm going to be opening up a, uh, a Indiegogo uh, where I'm going to be raising 100k so I can go to Japan to buy video games and eat pizza rolls. <laughs> and uh, damn, may- maybe, maybe you know, if I get enough donations, I'll give you guys a personal phone call and I will send you a picture of myself. I'll send you a picture of myself. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it, all it is is seven. All it is is seventy thousand. That's all oh, it is. Is, is that is donate that, seventy thousand? That's, that's very reasonable, Zander. That's very reasonable. Right? That's just yeah, a way yeah, of was, change. Is yeah, that, is that the photo I'll, that I photoshopped for you, where it says paint me as one of your French girls? Yeah, and there's <laughs> another one that you can get where I actually hold my hand out, and you can have your own personal Xander high five picture. <laughs> so you always have someone to high five. <laughs> And that's I'll tell you what, Xander, days. I'll give you ten grand right now if you call my neighbor and say, <laughs> Dave says you're a knob in an American accent. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not being serious, uh, listeners, I'm not doing any of that, but well, no, I'm really, uh, support, you guys can I'm check. I'm upset now, I was going to support <laughs> He wanted I was going to film the whole thing, too. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted <laughs> a segment with you as a skinless baby, you know, that's, that, that's Dave. That's my <laughs> shtick. No, no, no one else is allowed to be a skinless baby. And now we're just going tag. But yeah, uh, really YouTube.com. Yeah, YouTube.com slash Xander Scullion for my YouTube channel. Also, Excess Game Podcast you can find on uh, Podomatic.com. And soon you'll be able to find it on the Retro and Limb Network as well. 
as well as my content and uh, the Nerd Genius as well. You can find my content there. I love so, it yeah. that you plug my, my website so so vigorously. And we want you back as a guest, by the way, and you, Nick, as well. And Ty, you more than welcome. And Sean, more than welcome to be a yeah, guest. The, the Hunt and the Boy, for those who don't know about us, is a really big shoe. It's one of those shows where Thanks it's about nothing. It right. we, are, we, are the, we, we are the Seinfeld of podcasting, so check it out. Um, also, go to Mr. Sean Michelin. Sean, where can we find you? You can find me on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter at Dietless79, D-A-I-A-T-L-U-S-7-9. I just have had it for years. Um, uh, on Facebook, you can find me, Sean J. Michelin. I'll usually uh, add you, especially if you have a few friends in common with me. Uh, as well, I'm going to be starting a new Indiegogo where it's uh, going to be getting money together so we can get Burhan and uh, Mr. Wade over. And because of Mr. Yeah. Wade's experience, we are going to go on a crazy... Fueled uh, liquor fueled uh, party in Montreal, going through uh, all the strip bars, oh, and I've we'll add. Uh, oh bars. shit! For you, sir. Oh bloody Jump right! My money. And see, see a thousand dollars donated to it as well. We'll reach the plateau where you can sit down and get breakfast and lap dance while we sit down and talk yeah. gaming with you. That's convenient. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But excuse me while this hooker sits on my lap. I gotta put my uh, I gotta put my NES advantage on this uh, on the the ass of this uh, stripper here, and I'm gonna play me some Tetris. By the way, the, uh, to, uh, no, no, I don't want to sound like a complete per- pervert, but I just want to say, Sean, the, the, the greatest stick, strip club you stick uh, strip club you'll ever go into the world with is Wonders. Dave, Dave, you gotta stop interrupting people. Let him finish. This is yeah, important no, shit for a hand. But this is what strip club. Yeah, this is what most people say to the strippers. Let him finish. Go, Sean. <laughs> Wonders. But yeah, Wonders. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. But uh, that's pretty much me. And I'm uh, pretty much don't book. Uh, even if you don't add me, and just follow me. You'll see most of my posts. Um, okay, um, so everyone on here, stuff. stay online. I've got a surprise for you. Um, so, Mr. Power Metal Gamer, <laughs> tag. Where can we find you? Yes. You just asked me this like a couple oh, of minutes shit. ago. Oh, shit. I'm just, I'm getting everything. <laughs> Nick. Well, I, you can find me on Facebook, actually. You can give me a page of <laughs> like there. It's uh, Power Metal Gamer. His, his videos are Simple. really good as well. Very yeah, interesting. I'm talking to him right now. If you want to hear a sexy yeah. Irish accent, I think you need to tune into his channel. Nick, plug. All right, I can. I'm over on the YouTube at gaming pe- at the gaming Pegasus 27, gaming Pegasus 27 on Twitter, Facebook Nick Karachek, Xbox Live WWE Supercard, Instagram Pegasus 187. Um, fuck, just find me somewhere. We you. Fuck a baby Jane Adventures. I'm sorry, I'm already getting drunk. I, a couple of uh, Jack and Cokes in, so I'm done. YouTube.com forward slash the nerd genius, YouTube.com forward slash retro, uh, slash unim radio, which is the retro unim network. Find us on iTunes, ladies and gentlemen, as well. I've got gameplay. And also, I want to give a big, very special thank you to everyone on the show and for Xander Scully and Tag O'Callaghan, for Mr. Dave Wade, almost Boys 1975, Mr. Nick Horacek, for Brandon Ligon, for everybody out there, for Sean Michelin, for the firemen. That look after us places. For Angry Joe, and for you, me, <laughs> and every other sexy motherfucker out there, this is Michael Burhan saying that we've got gameplay. Have you? I've got gameplay. <laughs> I've got wood. <laughs> 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 <laughs>